Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, I wanted to make another video addressing the amaranth situation. If you haven't seen my prior video, I did a live stream yesterday where we talked about um, the allegations against her husband and kind of what, what came out, how little we actually know. And I kind of caution people to withhold judgment until more information comes out. And the reason I did that was because on the one hand, we see a lot of people saying that um, Amaranth is absolutely a victim. And if you don't immediately agree and believe her, like this believe all women stuff, you're somehow condoning A. Um, and then on the flip side, we had a lot of people saying she's absolutely faking this and these allegations are unfounded. Um, so you have two extremes here, right? Um, and I was saying, uh, let's be more nuanced. The real world isn't black and white like that. She's She may be telling the truth. We should give her the benefit of the doubt. It doesn't seem like this is another Amber Heard situation. Um, and there were several reasons for that. I kind of went into it yesterday. It's not like she's married to somebody that's more prominent and influential and financially successful that she stands to gain money from, um, you know, setting up or something. And but however, we don't know everything. We saw some screenshots of text messages. We don't know if they're real. We saw some damage to the property. We don't know who did that. Um, there's like a lot of things that we don't know. And to immediately label her husband um, as some kind of abuser, they could just have a toxic relationship, guys. And that's what I said yesterday. Um, I also, I want to point out, though, that like something I want to talk about is adults adults being adults and having consequences to their decisions, you know, and, and self-victimization. Um, Amaranth is someone that is a multimillionaire. She's a powerful person. She's famous. There are a lot of famous people who know she, who she is or would help her if she truly needed that help. Um, I just want to say off the bat, I'm, I'm not saying abuse is okay. It's never okay. I myself have been a victim of physical and SA. I was homeless when I was a teenager. I grew up in an abusive childhood, an abusive home, and I was thrown out into the street at 17 years old. My mother stole my identity. I was living out of a suitcase and sleeping on couches. I had to take sleeping meds just to fall asleep at night because I'd have panic attacks. Everything I owned was in one little suitcase. Uh, I had no money at all, not a penny to my name. I had no support system. I had no family. I had nowhere to go, no one to help me. I slept on strangers' couches, guys. Like, I've been in really bad situations, and uh, no one was there to help me. I didn't have the privilege of being a multimillionaire with um, a network of people willing and able to give me the support I need and help me get back onto my feet. So I want to say that, first of all, that, of course, I'm not excusing um, bad behavior or blaming a victim. I'd never do that. I've been one. I know what it's like. But I'm saying that there are real people out there who are going through really hard times and they're totally invisible. Men and women are being put in a abusive and exploitative situations when they're vulnerable they're being taken advantage of you know there are people that are homeless that are in really bad places and they're being preyed upon or just totally invisible and no one's offering to help them they have to beg for help if they get it at all um, they're living really rough and so i want to make a distinction between someone who's a multimillionaire living in a mansion right and getting to go to all these nice events, but maybe is in a toxic relationship, and people who are being severely abused, you know, like beaten to a pulp, put in the hospital, like there is a difference. And I want to be a voice for those people because they don't have the same resources, network, and ability that Amaranth has, okay? And so I want to talk about self-victimization, Right. When you're it's one thing if you're a child, if you're a teenager, maybe, and you're in a really bad place and someone preys on you and grooms you or um, uses you or takes advantage of you. 
I mean, we've all, I, I'm sure we've all been in a situation where someone has taken advantage of us or someone has hurt us, right? Um, this, there, we, we need to talk though about what happens once you're 18 years old and you become an adult, you are responsible for yourself. And sometimes people make bad decisions and those decisions, like there are consequences to those decisions and those choices. Like sometimes we make bad choices. We choose to be with someone that we know is toxic or isn't good for us. Amaranth is an adult, okay? She has agency. And I've seen a lot of people coming out virtue signaling about this situation, saying, oh, it's horrible, it's so bad, she's a victim. We have to immediately believe her without asking for more documentation or more proof or just even more context to the situation. Um, something I also want to point out is that she has apparently leveled false accusations in the past that she then backtracked from, couldn't substantiate uh, against a man. And I think that that is something that we, we need to look at uh, in this context and say, hey, could this be another similar situation? Now, Keemstar is somebody who, uh, he's another, I guess, um, content creator, streamer, he made some tweets questioning, just questioning the situation, and he was immediately dragged online, dogpiled. He had to delete his tweet, and I think he, he may have privated his account uh, because of just because of all the attacks he got for that. She has a lot of simps out there right now, and there are a lot of people virtue signaling. This is the Empathy and Compassion Brigade and the Believe All Women Brigade. You're not allowed to question things. You're not allowed to have your own opinion. You're not allowed to be nuanced. You're not allowed to ask questions or expect, um, you know, proof of accusations. And so I just, we are in the age, as I said in my last video, of Amber Heard, where we had somebody who made false accusations, faked crime scenes, basically, um, put fake bruises on her face and took pictures and set this man up, Johnny Depp, in advance. Now, I'm coming off the heels of having attended that trial in person in Fairfax County, Virginia. I live here in this area, so I attended that trial in person. I could see that this woman was vicious, like that she was kind of sociopathic and that she was lying, okay? And I watched her get up there and lie and fake cry and be manipulative and misrepresent things that happened. And I remember when she first made these allegations, everyone was like, you go queen, hashtag me too, I believe you. And they all attacked Johnny Depp. It took him years to get the truth out. And he is a wealthy, powerful, connected man with resources and a network and everyone turned on him. No one believed him. It took him six years to just get into the setting where evidence had to come out under certain criminal rules of procedure. He had to do it through the court system in order to make sure that it wasn't faked, right? That we could validate this stuff. And so I want people to remember that, that we are coming off the back of that. And when we are only getting a tiny little bit, we don't know the full context of everything. From what we heard on the phone call, yes, this man sounds um, abusive and he sounds toxic, right? But what led up to this? Did something happen? Did she do something? Is she also uh, abusing him? Is this just a toxic relationship? We don't know. What if she was planning to divorce him and wanted to set herself up publicly in the public eye for all of this stuff to come out? We don't know, and that is the point. It's not that we're invalidating victims or their abuse. We're not doing that. I think that someone, though, has to ask questions and kind of expect some kind of proof for allegations. But beyond what we got, we need to know the full context of things. So um, I'm going to just point out this is her husband. His name is Nick Lee. Um, I have now learned that. And again, I'm still learning. I don't know everything about this situation. I could be wrong of some of the things that I'm going to talk about. But I think that someone needs to have to ask these questions. It's important. I've seen so many people virtue signaling about this. Hassan is a big streamer. He's been virtue signaling off of this. A lot of huge uh, content creators with massive platforms are immediately running with a narrative and taking someone's side when we don't have the full picture and we don't know all of the information. And all I'm saying is I think that's dangerous. 
I don't think we should be rushing to judgment um, on any people, on Amaranth, on her husband, on their situation. I don't think anyone should be rushing to judgment. So she did a video uh, finally kind of addressing what happened. And I just included the picture here of her with her simp, with one of her simps, because there are people who are like who are who follow her that are borderline deranged and psychotic and have come at me for simply asking questions. I have not said anything bad about her. I haven't said I know for sure she's lying, she's making it up, she's fake crying, she's just manipulative. I did not say that. I said it's possible that that's a situation that's happening, but we don't know. And I simply caution people to, you know, reserve judgment until we get more information. And for just saying that, I've had these vicious people come after me. I'm a woman. It's okay for them to drag me but they're at the same time, they're saying we have to believe all women and we have to protect women and white knight for these girls. Really? So just to put that out there. All right. So I want to bring up uh, this here. OK, if you type just to show you all what happens, if you type in Amaranth is not a victim uh, into um, Twitter, this is what comes up. And this is what I mean by. This is so one-sided right now. Everyone is jumping to conclusions about it. You have this person saying, as a victim of A in a relationship myself, my heart goes out to Amaranth. I hope she's able to leave the situation safely, get all the support she needs while doing so. If you're not on her side, check yourself. None of this is a joke. But I remember the same people saying that about Amber Heard and rushing to judgment and coming to conclusions without all of the information. And it turned out that they were wrong. So what I'm saying is it's OK to support people that are victims of abuse, but you don't have you don't know everything. The only people that know everything that went down in that relationship is her and her husband. Um, this lady says it's absolutely terrifying to see how people are dehumanizing and insulting Amaranth as if she is not a victim and an incredibly strong person. But we really don't know, right? Is this not a case perhaps of self-victimization, of making a choice to stay in a toxic relationship with a toxic individual, making the choice to be with that guy in the first place? Like, She's an adult. She has agency. We're not talking about a child here who doesn't have a choice, who's being hurt by a grown up, someone who is in a position of power over them. And there's a power imbalance. Why can't people differentiate these things? And it isn't dehumanizing and insulting to simply ask for more information. Every victim of A is watching. The people around them blame A for being with an abuser. This is a reminder that it's always the abuser who is at fault and not the abused. Okay, but again, you do not know the extent of this. What if she is also an abuser? You don't know that. You don't know if she's been abusing him. She could, women can abuse men. Men can be victims too. So we don't know the full situation. And that is all I'm saying more virtue signaling. My heart goes out to Amaranth right now. She's going through so much and it's sad to see. If any of you don't support her, do not interact with me. This poor woman is a victim, a real living, breathing victim, and she's deciding to show the world. In, in, this poor woman is a multimillionaire one of the highest paid creators on OnlyFans with a massive platform, massive reach, one of the biggest streamers on Twitch, and you call her poor, she makes almost $3 million a month. No, there are poor women out there who have not a penny to their name, who are in situations where men are uh, financially abusing them, holding money over their head. They're totally dependent on that man to support them. They don't have jobs, maybe, or they've been isolated from family and friends. And they're they're stuck. They're literally stuck financially in that situation. So do not call her a poor woman. It's it's absurd. And quite frankly, uh, it's insulting to real women who are economically disadvantaged and have real problems, but don't have a massive platform. And no one knows their story and no one cares. No one's out there virtue signaling about them or cares about what happens to them. But what I mean is like people are so emotionally responsive and reactive to something that they don't have all the information on yet. And they're so emotionally invested. They're saying, do not interact with me if you don't support her. So if you don't immediately believe all women, don't interact with me. 
this is someone he doesn't know, doesn't hasn't ever met. He doesn't actually know the situation, but he's already emotionally invested in a narrative. And that to me is what's scary about this. And here's another guy. It really says a lot that people were not concerned about an abuse victim, but more about the fact that they weren't single this whole time. I hope Amaranth gets the help she needs and is able to escape her terrible situation. What about the women who literally can't escape? Like, there are women who aren't multimillionaires, don't have massive platforms. Like, does anyone care about them? Or is this all just about the virtue signal? That's my question. A is not a joke. You don't have to even like Amaranth to still have empathy and hope she makes it out all right. My heart goes out to her and any other victim of DA. She may not see your tweets, but someone you love in a similar situation could. That's fair, I suppose. This one, ain't, ain't no way I'm seeing people saying Amaranth deserves all of this. No one deserves to be verbally or physically aid. She is a victim of A and should be supported, not made fun of. Her husband is a, a psychopathic DA who should be in jail. Support victims, please. In jail for what? Yelling at her on the phone? Like, we don't actually know anything that really happened there. That's the thing. Like, police were sent to her house and she turned them away. She said she was fine and she was going to work things out with her husband. But I'm saying it's every single comment here. Every single comment is um, basically on her side and supporting her. We have one person saying Amaranth is not a victim. She's okay and has exposed an abuser. Great. Now pack your bags and leave them. I keep hearing about financials and stuff. She'll make it back. Stop with this whole mental stability stuff. Just leave and end the cycle already. So much time wasting. I thought that was a really interesting and fair comment. People saying not to trust Amaranth is only hurting people who'd come out with their A but now won't, seeing how a potential A victim is coming out being hailstormed with vitriol. I ate her too, but I don't jump to conclusions and wait to see before making a verdict. What? This is literally what people said about Amber Heard. We have to believe her because it might, uh, other uh, victims might be scared to come forward in the future. No, she's getting a tremendous amount of support. I haven't seen a tremendous amount of vitriol being thrown at Amaranth. I've seen a lot of people, even people that are, you know, more conservative and kind of are against the kind of work that she does, you know, the, the thoughtery and e-girl stuff on the internet, they're even coming out and supporting her. So I don't see where where she's being a hailstorm. That's simply not happening. And we don't have to just believe people so that other people feel safe to come forward. You either come forward or you don't. You tell the truth. It shouldn't matter what other people have done or said. But Amber Heard had everybody believed her and she lied and a man's life was almost destroyed his relationship with his children too but this is what i mean comment after comment after comment virtue signaling virtue signaling virtue signaling i'm not seeing people say hey um let's wait till we get more information before we jump to conclusions now let's go to this article here um, this is from Kotaku, and I will put uh, a link to this in the video description. Twitch star, I'm free now, seeking legal counsel. Um, I think when he heard himself on that call, it really sank in how much of an A he really is, the streamer said. So this is, um, I guess, a positive thing. It's good to see her actually fully clothed. I like that. Good for her. Um, maybe this is uh, going to be a good thing for her. Maybe she'll start making more wholesome content that she, where she can actually be a real role model for young women instead of um uh, being a negative one and, and uh you know with the way she dresses like i like to see her looking more modest um streamer and content creator caitlin uh, Siragusa, a.k.a. Amaranth, has recorded her first video since she revealed on Sunday she was in an abusive relationship with her husband. The video was to update fans on what has been happening, adding that she's, quote, happy that I'm free, unquote. Um, I want to talk to you guys about the situation, she begins, addressing the events of Sunday night in which she broadcast abusive phone calls and messages left by her husband. Quote, thank you, everyone who's been super kind and supportive lately. Over the past few days, I've had lots of people reach out to show concern. That means a lot. 
explaining why she hasn't been online since due to everything going on she says as for the husband situation as some of you probably saw the other night he called me during a stream and i disappeared for like two hours yet no one heard what went down during that two hour period then i finally unmuted about an hour and a half into the call and i apologize if that was hard to watch for people i didn't really know what else to do well um, I guess she could have called the police like there. I don't know. There are there are options that could have called a, a law firm, a divorce lawyer. She says that was actually the first time he's ever heard himself on a recording, adding he had been recorded during other abusive calls, but had never agreed to previous attempts to have him listen to himself. I think when he heard himself on that call, it really sunk in how much of a I'll say jerk he really is. She laughs. It's like you never even realized, idiot. So she's like already laughing about this stuff. Amaranth says her husband is away getting help and that as of today, I have access to all my accounts and finances again. Well, she's also seeking legal and emotional counsel. That's a good thing. And I said this yesterday that she is not helpless. She has the ability to get control of her stuff, right? She has a legal right to that. That's her money. Anything he spent, she could get a, a judgment against him and get that money back. She wants wasn't helpless, okay? I saw a lot of people saying, oh, oh, she can't because he controls everything. She, there's nothing she can do. Yes, she had options and she literally proved me right. I said she could get that overnight and it looks like she has. Repeatedly uh, uh, appreciative throughout the video of the love and support she's received since Sunday evening, including offers of legal support. I said that too, that there were lawyers that would take her case for free. She didn't have to have the money to give them right away. Like people, lawyers work on contingency basis at some times, like, oh, I won't charge you until we win and get your finances back or whatever. She says, I didn't think that many people would give an SHIT. To be honest, it's kind of crazy. Amaranth then adds, even haters are like, damn, I hate Amaranth, but you know what? I hope she's okay. That's so nice. That's been most people. Uh, she also took time to address the actions of her quote unquote cameraman, who she now is referring to as a former cameraman, saying some people, though, seem to be using the situation for personal gain and clout, which is less moving than the messages of support. Unfortunately, my former cameraman seems to be one of those people. She says that over the TwitchCon weekend, that was October 7th to 9th, he made the situation more explosive than it needed to be in an attempt to create a scene and that his actions inflamed tensions between her and her husband, and that helped lead to the events of Sunday evening. She accuses him of encouraging people to show up at her her door who she doesn't know um and so i think that that's kind of weird like that she she's kind of already again sort of like deflecting from responsibility and accountability and saying well the cameraman helped inflame this and he helped cause this situation with me and my husband and detailing the strained relationship between herself and her husband, she says this A had been going on for years, that it would come and go in cycles, and previous attempts to explain the situation to police had been unsuccessful because they couldn't do anything unless she had been physically harmed. So we know he hasn't physically harmed her. There are women who have gone through that that are real victims, and we should be concerned about those women. That's not to say that mental, psychological A isn't bad. Of course it is. Being gaslit and lied to is really bad. And in some cases, it is worse than physical abuse because those leave marks and bruises. And you can show that to people and people can understand that you're a victim of A. When you have psychological scars, no one can see it. It's invisible. So just to kind of throw that out there. Later in the hour-long stream, while reading viewer comments aloud, one fan says, I thought you were a girl boss. That's the other thing. None of these girls, these bad uh, bad boss babes, whatever they want to call themselves, the girl boss, none of them are empowered. Like, it's not true. They claim that, but the, some of those women are the most unhappy, sad, miserable, lonely women out there. She says, no, I was a girl employee. Now I can be a girl boss. That is also kind of strange. She says there have been many times in her career at events and streams where she just wanted to go home and play Pokemon like a child, but it continued streaming because she was afraid of confrontation 
with her husband. She also comments that she's now looking forward to actually being able to have friends again, get sleep, watch TV, wear some clothes. The stream ends with Amaranth saying it's time for a new chapter in her career, though she's going to first take time to process things, spend time with her animals, and feel like a human again. So this is the video. It begins about 30 minutes in. I don't know if we want to like watch all of this. I'm probably not going to. Um, but we can play a clip from it, sure. The creators, even people who don't like me, <laughs> like even haters are like, damn, I fucking hate Amaranth, but you know what? I hope she's okay. <laughs> That's so nice. It's crazy. It's been, it's been a wild ride. As you can see, doggos are safe. The big one is outside. Okay, I'm not going to watch this whole thing, but I wanted to bring this up because I kind of had a feeling that this was going to happen. This woman is, I believe, from Vice. Yeah, Vice CBS. Um you know, she, mainstream media, okay? She says, in June, experts warned that the her depth trial would create a playbook for misogynists online. They were right. After streamer Amaranth alleged A, some immediately called her a liar, grifter, and Amber Heard. So whose fault is that? Isn't that Amber Heard's fault? Not so-called misogynists online? That's This is ridiculous. This story comes only three days after we wrote about trolls targeting Angelina Jolie and other women who've spoken out about A. They've been called liars and, of course, Amber Heard 2.0. Um, excuse me. Really? So Amber Heard isn't responsible for lying about A? We're going to pretend they're still pretending that Amber Heard is a victim. And this woman right here, she's another absolute psychopath. Um, I forget her name, this actress, but she is the one that has leveled allegations against Marilyn Manson years later. Evan Rachel Hoare, um, Wood, sorry. <clears throat> Earlier this month, we wrote about how Amber Heard is no longer just a name. A's can use it in the same way they use slurs like the B word to discredit their partners. At least one convicted A did this. Really? Man who assaulted his girlfriend named her Amber Heard. Like, this, uh, what? That's national news? One person? One person, like that's all they've got to substantiate any of this. The absolute conviction some people online have when automatically discrediting A allegations is misguided but effective. It silences other victims. No, it doesn't. And several experts have repeatedly told me it's getting worse. No, why don't you hold Amber accountable for lying? How about that? How about when you lie about A and pretend to be a victim when you're not? That harms real victims. That's the real harm that's going on. So how about when you automatically believe A allegations? How about that's misguided too? We should demand due process. Why is that hard? I don't get it. So here we go uh, on Reddit, the simps. She's like Amber Heard, the disgusting reaction to Amaranth's abuse from her husband. Here we got a virtue signal about people, again, asking questions. So I want to move on now to what I have... Um, what I have seen, which is the allegations that she had made against somebody else that apparently were false, because I think that's important context to understand. Well, Amaranth is back. This is an old video from a guy named John Del Eros. Um, I, I have two clips from him in here that I wanted to share. And he is talking about like she made these allegations and then had to backtrack. In my comments again, and she's going ballistic. Very interesting. I don't know why somebody with a million plus followers who makes 1.5 million a month uh, through her OnlyFans uh, is spending her time on my channel. But thank you, Amaranth, for doing so. I appreciate the attention and uh, I appreciate all the clicks. It's great. Uh, now, she has been stirring up controversy with Anime Matsuri uh, and making some serious allegations against the CEO there. And it looks like she's backtracking. So she said one thing in my first video. And then she said completely different thing in another. Now it's looking like she kind of made this stuff up. I think she's kind of going full Amber Heard, my friends. 
you never go full Amber Heard. True. <laughs> All right. My name is John Delarose. I am a number one best-selling author and award-winning comic creator. Uh, if you like hot redheads, okay, modern, we don't. Thank you. I did not label. Okay, let's go me. back to this. The Pokemon actual Herbie. allegations here. Um, Sorry. Days ago, I made a video about this, and I made a video about how uh, she's accusing the um, anime Matsuri CEO of uh, grooming her, basically. And <laughs> what? One, of my, one of my wonderful followers here, uh, Origami, uh, pointed out, here she says, to be clear, you're saying I did the grooming. I did not label it. Yeah, she didn't say the word. I just described the events as they appear and the texts read. So she's trying to say that, like, it's all me making up this grooming allegation. But if you look at actually what she says right here, uh, she said she goes, uh, uh, this is what she says, uh, visibly discussed allegations. This is her quote, who goes out of their way to make excuses for preying upon young women minors. So preying upon young women minors, uh, that's an accusation of grooming. Uh, right. That is what that means. That's what she said. That is literally said. what we're talking about every time that happens. And in my comments, she claimed that the CEO of Anime Matsuri uh, was sending her uh, sexual underage texts when she was underage. And uh, and if that was the case, I said, bring it out. I, I Email me the texts. I will take your side in this because I do not want uh, grown adult men sending texts like that to yeah. young women if that's the case. Exactly. Uh, that's not right. And uh, we are opposed to that in the channel here. Uh, of course, uh, I knew deep down that uh, she was not going to produce those texts and that this was all just like some sort of cry of attention. This was some sort of Amber Heard nonsense like it always is. And she came back to my comments in the video, uh, which was challenging her to actually produce the evidence because evidence is what matters here. Yes. Uh, and she changed her tune. So after she said uh, he was sending her, uh, you know, underage texts like that, this is what she says now. And she left a lot of text. So let's go through this. Uh, here it is on my YouTube channel. Uh, right here in my comments. Uh, so she says, I mean, I get more reach than you do. I'd rather watch all the defenders circle the wagon than drop the bomb. So she's uh, saying that she would rather us come out here, defend him, and then and then she dropped the bomb just to like uh, just to mess with us. So this is a total intention to mess with us, to mess with Anime Matsuri, uh, to mess with just fans of uh, just normalcy. Uh, she wants to uh, create this whole gaslighting experience is what it goes, is what happens here. She says, if I drop mm. the video, uh, one of you guys uh, would abstain from covering it. Uh, what? I think waiting a bit to build my own co convention. So she's going to make her own convention, I guess. An update is a better move. I think you'd have to. So here's the thing. She was making these allegations. It seems like because she was about to launch her own version, like her own convention to challenge uh, anime Matt Suri. So it would be like a, um, you know, like she, a, a business competition sort of. And that's the thing that I find really weird. It's like in advance of launching a competitor to anime Matt Suri, a, a competitor um, event, she like makes these allegations beforehand. And is she doing that to amplify her new thing? Like, so that is really important, right? If we're considering like the situation with her husband, what if it was a similar situation where like she knew they were going to get divorced or something and that their relationship was falling apart and she wanted to kind of preempt the situation. And I know it's really, it sucks to have to think like that, right? That we have to be that cynical and jaded when it comes to this stuff, the online streamers, content creators, because they've done these plays before and and it sucks that we have to think that way but after amber heard and what we learned from that like i'm sorry but i'm questioning everything i question everybody and i kind of ask for receipts agree so she's saying she's not going to provide the evidence she's going to try to start her own convention and then she's going to release this later now what's interesting is if you go back to 2018 why would you like think about that though if she's if she was saying that this guy from anime Matsuri was preying on young women and was a bad man. Why would you sit on the evidence then? Wouldn't you want to get it out as soon as possible so that you could kind of help other women not become victims to him? Why would you sit on the evidence if you had it? That to me seems weird. Just so you could own the haters or something. Like what? 
And I think Amaranth's like 28, right? So at 2018, she was at Anime Matsuri, posting about how she loved cosplaying there and all that. So before this became a political thing, and Anime Matsuri became a political hot topic, uh, with a bunch of YouTubers, basically from the right, showing up, who are not allowed to be at conventions. Ah! Uh, Amaranth was fine with it. And now, uh, five years, so she was 23 at the time. Now that she's 28, uh, she's not fine with it. And it's all because people like Ricada are there, like Vic Mignona are there, are there like uh, Yellow Flash, that Umbrella guy. Uh, you know, all the popular YouTubers are there. Now, she, now she's mad about it. So it's obviously just a play for attention. Uh, she's, she's not actually concerned about safety because she didn't demonstrate that she was, even though she claimed she was, and that's it. So here she goes. That said, I'll preview, if so, screenshot, if so, screen, whatever, this if you want. Uh, and the clown who said I'd get sued, uh, he wouldn't because then it would come out. The basis of this is a Facebook chat which links to his Facebook account. Facebook chat that links to his Facebook account. So it's not even his Facebook account. So it weird. Like if I made the video, it bears explaining because there's a lot of BS. Yeah, it's not that hard, you know, Amaranth. If you have an actual situation where a guy was sending you uh, sexual DMs and he's like in his 30s or whatever and you're like 16, uh, you know, we that doesn't bear explaining. You don't right? need to explain. It's, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> so he's good at making it, it seem be. subtle. Here we go. And so when I when I read this, I saw it. Oh, so it's not real. <laughs> You're making it up in your head. Okay, but basically, basically, he approaches me via DM. So he says, so he DM'd her. Not he didn't say anything like, hey baby, or in DM. He just DM'd her. Okay. And invites me to do a special cosplay elaborate spectacle at the kickoff of a cosplay contest. So Amaranth That's is a like cosplayer. That's kind of like what she does. And she's a cosplayer. She's scene. And he asks her, as the convention CEO, uh, to be a part of the cosplay event. That's it. It's pretty much a nothing burger, Amaranth. That, that is not what you... <laughs> We're implying it's not something that could be pulled off with copious permitting. I'm I'm super into the project. He's just talking to me about it while sprinkling Everly so carefully. But I mean, in retrospect, it isn't careful. Oh, what? okay. Hey, how old are then you? I reply my age. And th and this is where it, this is where it changes from the the time before, right? So she implied before she said underage in the old in the old comments. Now she says I reply my age, which is not the legal drinking age. So now she's under 21, not under 18. <laughs> it's just weird. Oops. That's quite a difference, Amaranth. So <laughs> if you're over 18, uh, this, this is not the same discussion we were having the other day. This is ridiculous. A lot of exposition about the project. So he's talking to her about the project. Uh, and then he, then he allegedly says, again, she hasn't produced this, hey, you want to come out and get drinks? Again, he's established my age. Yeah, you're over 18. So, oh well. You, I drank in college. Whatever. Okay. I decline again by citing my age. He tells me I'm no fun and plays it off as a joke. Hey, do you have a boyfriend, girlfriend? I apply no way. Does it matter? More about the project. So that's it. That's literally it. That's it. And he, she's apparently over 18 at this point, so who cares? Finally, he asks if I'm going to kiss or make out with another girl cosplayer. Winky face. And that's it. That's his whole deal. So this is an adult girl who's having a conversation with him about cosplay. And uh, and he makes, uh, you know, maybe a comment which is uh, which is a little flirty. And that's it. That's, that's what I'm reading here. So if you have something else, if you want to prove, Amaranth, that you're under 18 in this. Okay, so let's move on to on a video that he did to... Um, I think just yesterday or today talking about this and he brings up this situation again, but in the context of like what we're hearing about her with her, um, her husband. Online e-whoring is a big problem. <laughs> I keep trying to wake people truth, up to this truth. because there's too many people, frankly, just simping on the internet uh, so for true. these nut jobs and it ruins everybody involved. It ruins your relationships uh, as a potential, if you're simping and, and masturbating to this stuff, Stop uh, it doing ruins that, guys. the women involved Please. because they're always in slave situations and things like that. Yeah. It ruins everybody around their lives because what happens is these people go crazy 
And they start pointing fingers at everybody uh, to blame them for their psychological problems. And that's exactly what we have going on with Amaranth. I mean, so we've covered Amaranth in the past. Uh, she showed up and was, uh, of course, in my comments talking about this guy from Anime Matsuri, which is a convention on, about anime, trying to cancel and destroy him. Uh, she said a bunch of stuff without evidence, just tried to ruin his life Super uh, important. for no reason, and then uh, kind of just went away. So he went away because I don't really care about uh, her and her existence. I try not to watch that shit. So <laughs> same. we've got a different situation today, which is really interesting. It's both sad and funny at the same time. I, I don't I don't even know how, what to do on a take on this, uh, because I really just want to warn against this kind of thing. Like, I, I, I hate pornography. I think it should be banned. I think me all too. this shit should be off of every single platform. Yeah. It does make me mad because it is ruining people's lives. And of course, what happens when kids get addicted to this stuff, which they do. I mean, eventually... 15, 16 year olds find this sort of thing and then they start getting that cycle of addiction going. It ruins another generation of lives yeah. uh, into this sexual depravity that we now call our modern society. It's a terrible thing and uh, I want it all gone. I want it purged from the internet. That's where we're going. Okay. Right. Agreed. Um, okay. He's going to talk about how he's a great uh, author or whatever. We're going to move on from that and go to the actual story here. Uh, what happened yesterday, Amaranth went in her chat and uh, gave this sort of crying sort of deal. Uh, instead of actually, like, uh, I guess, working out her problems with her husband, uh, and I guess, spoiler, she has a husband, uh, <laughs> she went on a live stream and uh, played a phone call where she's uh, trying to goad him into yelling at her. He did yell at her, and uh, it, it was really ugly. Uh, it was ugly stuff, and she started showing this about how how much of a victim she is. Poor Amaranth, making her $3 million a month, <laughs> stripping right? online, uh, and having a bunch of dudes uh, fap to her. Uh, you know, she's the victim here. She of wants course. you to know that, and that's exactly kind of what she does. That You know, I, I some people are saying it's... The, these girls are always victims. They don't have any responsibility or accountability or any agency. Things just happen to them, apparently. Like, they're not responsible for the consequences of their own choice. I can't stand that stuff. A ploy for attention and fake and all that. I think it is real. Uh, and here's the reason why. Like, look, if you're in this kind of a relationship where your husband is your pimp, uh, obviously you're not going to have a good relationship. If you're out there displaying yourself uh, to millions of guys on the internet like this, uh, obviously that's not going to be a healthy relationship the other way around, too. Uh, this doesn't work out ever. It, it, it is a destructive lifestyle. Women being encouraged in this kind of thing is absolutely evil, and it is destructive, like I said. It's about it's about just destroying your soul at the end of the day. The devil does this intentionally, and it's been made profitable intentionally in order to try to ruin an entire generation of girls. Uh, and moreover, yep. it's to stop people from just like having like stable relationships, getting married, having babies. Uh, and all that, because that that is the destruction of God's will at the end of the day. And that's what's going on here. Look, I kind of feel bad for her. I mean, you know, I know I, know I shouldn't. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, at the end of the day, uh, we are a compassionate group here. And, you know, the goal is for people to be brought to Christ and to change their behaviors and change this lifestyle and get out of this lifestyle uh, so that your soul can be saved. And we hope that that happens for Amaranth and for her husband. Obviously, both are uh, under demonic influence. Agreed. And uh, they, need, they need some prayers, guys. They really do. I agree with that. And I think I'll probably end it there. Um, you know, you guys can look more into this on your own, but I, I kind of just want to close out with like, I'm skeptical of everyone at this point, especially online content creators, um, people that have made false accusations in the past, apparently, and like, we're supposed to just act like that didn't happen and not question things that they say in the future. Um, I, I have problems with that. And I think that a lot of this comes down to making the choice to be, you know, to self victimize, making the choice to be in a toxic relationship with somebody doing, uh, things that are, uh, wrong, you know, and yeah, choices, um, actions have consequences and it's not everybody else's fault. If you're an adult, you have agency and she's got more than enough resources, uh, to kind of get her life on track and get away from this guy. And it looks like that is what she's doing. So I just want people to, um, before you jump to any position or take any side or get emotionally invested, ask for more information. 
I think that's most important. Anyways, what are your thoughts on this? I want to know what you guys think. I always like hearing your comments and your opinions because a lot of times you guys come up with things that like I hadn't I hadn't seen or I hadn't thought of, I hadn't considered, and it always generates like a really interesting um, conversation, I think. And sometimes it gives me you guys give me information I didn't have and I change my opinion or maybe I do another video or something talking about this. I just thought that I wanted to, sh you know, say something that maybe other people are too scared to say because they're worried they're going to get canceled or that the mob is going to come after them and slam them and drag them. I honestly don't care about that. I'm going to ask questions no matter what. I'm going to ask for evidence. I think due process is important. I think we should learn the lessons from what happened with Johnny Depp. That is super, super important to me still having witnessed that in person this idea that yes, women can lie, they can be manipulative, you know, they can be abusive, they can be toxic, they can, um, you know, harass, harass, nag, 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 push, push, push to get a reaction and then use that reaction to make them look good. This is something Amber Heard did to Johnny Depp repeatedly. Then she'd turn on a camera to record him and then give that recording to TMZ. Guys, come on. This is why we have to ask these questions. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, if you liked it, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't, consider doing that. Um, give it a like, leave a comment, please share the video. That's most important. If you want to um, donate to my work, I have links in the video description. I now have a Venmo. It's just um, at Radix Verum on Venmo. You can now donate to me that way as well. Um, hope you guys have a good day and I will talk to you later. Ree and Sneed.